Welcome to the Private Corporate Council podcast. My name is T. Persaud. I'm a lawyer, mediator, and business consultant focusing exclusively on helping small and medium-sized businesses grow and develop in the Central Florida region. One of the issues I want to talk to you about today is how to analyze your small or medium-sized business. Most small and medium-sized business owners I meet are entrepreneurs in a relationship, and they're dealing with not only the relationship issues, whether it's with a partner or a spouse, but they want to focus on the business issues, but they don't really understand all of the issues that they need to focus on. They're usually just focused on one or two issues. For example, they just may be focused on the customer and getting the customer acquisition uh, in the sales process, or they may just be concerned about doing a great job and ensuring that the goods or services that they're providing is the best. But those are two issues that are certainly important to the business, but not the only two issues that are important. What I try to do is try to focus them on the building blocks for the business. As we analyze the business, we start at the core. And at the core, we start with the customer segment. That is the first thing that I talk to business owners and entrepreneurs about, primarily because if you don't get the customer segment analysis correct, nothing else matters. You have to have a good customer segment that's narrow enough so that you're not providing too much to too many people, and you really have a good understanding of your customer base. This is what most people in the advertising world calls your ideal customer. Narrowing that customer base, building an avatar for that ideal customer, and building a profile for the ideal customer is the first step. Once you're, I've identified the ideal customer and have learned as much as you can about the ideal customer, then it's time to work on the value proposition. Now, the value proposition is simply the goods and services that are being provided by your business to that ideal customer segment. So instead of focusing first on the value proposition, you focus first on the customer segment so that you can ensure that the customer segment is receiving from your business the goods and services that will help them do their jobs, relieve their pains, give them the gains that they want, or help them in some form or fashion make progress towards their aspirations. Now, when you're finished designing the value proposition, which is a good fit between the customer segment and uh, the value proposition, uh, then uh, what you want to focus on is the customer relationship. That is, how do you get customers? How do you keep the customers you have? And how do you grow your customer base? Now, there are a lot of different marketing strategies that you can utilize for that. Primarily, I like to focus on one that I think is important, and that is understanding the customer's psychological journey. And that is your ideal customer. The psychological journey that a customer goes through usually starts off where they don't even know you, they don't know your brand, they don't know anything about the products or services you provide. And in fact, they don't even know if they need your product or services. So at this stage, it's all about how do you get them to know you How did it get them to know that you exist and what you provide and to remember you? Once you've gotten past that stage, the next stage is, wow, the customer does actually have a need for your type of goods or services, but they don't know who to choose. Your goal here is to get within the top three of the categories or choices that they have. Once you've gotten them to that point where they're at least considering you as one of the top three choices, then the goal next is to try to get them to act on that, consider you, and get to the point of talking to you and having that discussion. And this is where you employ many of the sales strategies and techniques, because at this stage, your goal is to get them to convert into your customer. And that is the goal for every single new customer that you have. How do we get people to know we exist? How do we get them to put us in at least the top three of the potential alternatives to help them acquire these goods or services? And how do we actually get them to buy from us and actually close the sale and convert into a customer? Now, that's not where the journey ends. The journey has to continue beyond that because we need to keep the customers that we have. And so in order to do that, we have to wow them in one form or fashion. Now, there's no doubt that we have to understand their expectations, manage their expectations, meet their expectations, and even exceed their expectations. But in addition to that baseline requirement, I think it's also important for us to create some memorable moment for that uh, ideal customer. What does that memorable moment look like? It could be a number of things. Uh, It could be 
we helped them overcome something that was really uh, important, uh, uh, help them have a breakthrough, or help them in some form or fashion that they did not expect and that they can actually remember. So when you have met your client's expectations and have exceeded them and you've created a memorable moment, then you get them to the point where they are likely to use you again and continue to use you. Uh, the next stage after that is to get them to help you to improve your value proposition. Now they are using you, they have a vested interest in continue to use you, and so they have a strong interest in helping you improve yourself. So how do you get them to do that? A lot of thought has to go into that process uh, because if they do help you to improve your value proposition, it is likely that they'll be emotionally connected to you and they will have tremendous buy-in. And once they're at that point and you've effectively worked with them to uh, to solicit information and to get them to collaborate with you to improve your value proposition, then how do you turn them into your advocate? Well, you can do a number of things to help them help you promote your business, promote your goods and your services. And that can help. Uh, that help can come in a number of places. Uh, it can come from an email that they can forward. It can come from a flyer. Uh, it can come from a business card or a website. Uh, but the goal here is to make it easy for your existing customer who likes you, who remembers you, who has helped you improve your value proposition in your business to tell other people about your business and help them sell the business for you. In my experience, if you're able to take your customer through these six stages in this journey, from the brand awareness to the choice, to the sales, to the conversion uh, to the, wow, they've met and exceeded my expectations and gave me something memorable to helping. They, and I've helped them create uh, their value proposition and improve their business to now where it may is I'm the customer and I'm willing to advocate on your behalf. Then that customer is going to tell other people about you, raise the awareness, help other people choose you, help you with the sales process and help you with the conversion process. Now, these three stages are pretty important for every single business. Understanding your customer segment, creating a good value proposition, making sure there's a fit between the two, and effective uh, customer relationships. But it's also important to know how to get your goods or services from you or from their point of origin to the customers themselves, whether that be a supply chain issue or a simple email communication or a simple letter or document it's pretty important to pay attention to that. That portion of the business model is what I call the desirability portion of the business model. Do you have a customer segment that desires what you want, what, uh, what you're selling, what you have? Um, are you able to not only give them the raw goods and services, but are you able to relate that to them in such a way they feel connected to you? And are you able to deliver at the time you promised or earlier. Now, once you've finished the desirability portion, it's probably time to work on the feasibility portion. And that is, what are the key activities or the res and the key resources you need in order to actually execute on that value proposition for that customer segment? Um, and, and this is usually considered the operational part of the business. Some people call it traction. Uh, and some people say that you need a, an enterprise or uh, a, an organizational system in place to be able to do that. Well, that's what the organization is made up of. It's made up of key activities and key resources with key personnel necessary to execute on that value proposition. So now we have two sides of the coin, and that is the desirability portion, which includes the customer segment, the value proposition, customer relationship, and the channel of distribution, and the feasibility portion, which includes the key activities, the key resources, and the key partners necessary to deliver on those. Now, you also need to make sure that this business is viable. And viability in the business world is determined by whether or not this business can actually generate enough revenue to cover its expenses and turn a profit. So there has to be a cost structure. What are the financials looking like? Do you have enough capital to not only start the business, but to deal with the negative cash flow that you can expect for the first? Uh, periods of the business, whether that period is a few months or a few years, where the business is going to be losing money 
because of capital expenditure to actually start the business until it turns a profit. And what's the revenue stream going to be? Uh, are you going to be pricing this in a way that you actually reduce the acquisition cost for the clients, increase the likelihood of the clients paying on a regular basis, um, or making sure that the payments that are received uh, from your clients cover the actual cost of the business. Now, those nine elements that we just discussed, that four of them comprising of the desirability portion, three of the feasibility portion, and two of the viability portion, those are must-haves for every single business. And every business should analyze those issues very carefully at the outset. If the business is not viable, another model should be designed. If the customer segment is not a customer segment that you can develop a value proposition for, then you should choose a different customer segment. If the value proposition that you have does not meet uh, any of the needs or the wants of the uh, customer segment and doesn't help them do their jobs, reduce their pains, or get them the gains that they want, or help them make progress towards their aspiration, then you should actually start working on developing another value proposition. If you have a great value proposition and you know your customer segment and you can relate to your customer and deliver on that, but you don't have the resources and, and don't have the, the ability to provide the activities um, or the key personnel to do that, then that's an issue as well. But for the purposes of today, let's assume for a minute that uh, your business has all of those nine elements to it. Then what else should you consider? Well, at that point, you need to consider the legal and regulatory issues. Are there any legal or regulatory roadblocks in your, in your way of launching your business model or to operating your business successfully? Whether those are by contract or by statute or by a regulation issued by a government agency. And if there aren't any, then what's the risk look like? Does it make sense to do a risk analysis at this stage of the game? Are we risking personal assets when we operate this business? Those things need to be carefully analyzed as well. And of course, there are going to be issues dealing with your competition. You should spend some time understanding who your competitors are and what their value propositions are compared to yours and which customer segments they're going after compared to the customer segments you're going after, and whether or not they're able to effectively put together an organizational structure to actually deliver on that value proposition that is cost effective and has a sufficient revenue stream to remain competitive. And then of course, identifying all the obstacles in your way. So when you finish with this first nine elements and, and you're looking at these other four elements, the legal and regulatory issues, risk analysis, competition, and obstacles, it becomes very important for you to have more of a holistic view of your business. So you start paying attention to the trend and analyzing the trends in your industry and anticipating issues that pop up and develop a strategic issue analysis framework so you can deal with those consistently. So you can pay attention to the environmental issues and the technology issues so that if there's a change in the environment, whether it be by weather or a natural disaster or a pandemic or a political issue, uh, then you can actually be flexible enough and nimble enough to actually uh, deal with it effectively. And what are the technological issues that, that arise? Is technology changing so fast that your business proposition or your value proposition will be obsolete within a period of time. Now, assuming that you've got all those issues ironed out, the initial nine, which are the customer segment, value proposition, customer relationship, channel distribution, and the key activities, resources, and personnel, the cost structure and the revenue stream, and there are no legal or regulatory issues that you have not addressed, and the risk is feasible, uh, and you've done your risk analysis, you're able to analyze the competition and differentiate yourself enough and overcome all the obstacles, understand the trend and, and stay within the trend or ahead of the trend, anticipate and address issues e easily, and, uh, be flexible enough to deal with environmental issues um, and uh, utilize the, the technology available as effectively as possible, uh, then you also need to pay attention to the key life cycles. I usually start off by discussing the key personnel life cycles within the organization. Where are the key uh, members of this organization in their life cycle? Are the owners aging out? 
Are they in the pre-prime stage or are they in prime? What about the product or service that you're providing? What is that product or services life cycle? And your business life cycle in general, where is your business in that continuum? Are you a new business? Have you been around for a long time? Are you aging? Are you past prime? And what about the industry life cycle? That's important as well. If you miss the industry life cycle like Blockbuster did, then you become obsolete. And so that's the model business analysis that I think is important for every business to run on their business. Whether it's a new business or an existing business, it's important for them to be able to have a framework in which to analyze uh, the elements of their business. This business analysis canvas that I just described to you is a good tool to use. To learn more about the business analysis canvas, uh, or what I call the mini MBA, uh, and to find out more about what private corporate counsel can do for you and your small or medium-sized business, please feel free to contact us at 407-647-7887 or email us at info at pcc.law. For now, I hope that you have a wonderful time owning and operating your business and that you are able to face all the challenges you come, that come your way and look forward to talking to you in the future. Please continue to listen to our podcast to learn more. Contact us at 877-647-7887 or email us at info at pcc.law to learn more about the Private Corporate Council program and how we can help you and your business on your journey to success.